you ask any North American what's the most important sitcom in the history of American television, he'll probably tell you it's I Love Lucy. If you ask a British what's the most important sitcom in the history of British television, he'll probably say it's Only Fools and Horses. But if you ask any Latin American what's the most important Latin sitcom ever, he will undoubtedly tell you El Chavo del Ocho. El Chavo, for short, was a Mexican sitcom that originally aired from 1973 to 1980. The show was created by Roberto Gomez Bolaños, more commonly known as Chespirito. But why was El Chavo so important? Well, to answer this, first we need to talk about Bolaños' life and another shows created by him. Chespirito was born in Mexico in 1929. His father was a painter and a cartoonist, but he was also an alcoholic, and he died when Roberto was only six years old. His mother was a bilingual secretary and raised Roberto and his two brothers, Francisco and Horacio, by herself. Roberto was an amateur boxer and was studying to become an engineer. However, one day he saw an ad for an internship in radio and television production. When he got there, there was two lines. The longer one was for the internship in production, but there was a second line, shorter. He asked what this other line was, and they told him it was for an internship in writing. He then decided to go to the shorter line, and thus he became a writer. He wrote jingles, advertisements, and comic strips. His talent was remarkable, and he was later hired to write comedy screenplays for Viruta and Capulina, a comedic duo in Mexico, in the TV show Comicos y Canciones. One day, one actor didn't show up to the shooting, and the producers decided that Roberto would replace him, since he knew all the lines. And he was great! His past as an amateur boxer helped him to be very agile in scene. That led him to start acting more often in the show, and his characters were always a success. At that time, he gained his famous nickname, Chespirito. Spanish way of calling him Little Shakespeare. He was also writing the program El Estudio de Pedro Vargas, and he was so good that both programs were constantly disputing the first place in audience. In fact, he became so popular that Viruta and Capulina started to get jealous of his success. In 1968, both shows ended, and Roberto was hired in 1969 to create his own TV show, El Ciudadano Gomez, or The Citizen Gomez in English. That was a huge success, but only lasted 13 episodes. In 1970, Chespirito created a new TV show, Los Super Genios de la Mesa Cuadrada, or The Super Geniuses of the Square Table in English, a parody of newscast programs. They would read and discuss fictional news and letters in a satirical way. At that time, Bolaños was already working with some of his future co-workers in his most famous creation, Ramón Valdés, Ruben Aguirre, and María Antonieta de las Nieves. As a part of the program, Chespirito created a coward and clumsy anti-hero that he called Chapulín Colorado, or Red Grasshopper. Chapulín was different than a normal superhero figure common until that point. He had a good heart and a desire to do good, but he often made mistakes. Sometimes he would catch innocent people and let criminals go. But at the end, everything was resolved, by accident or by other people. Later, Chespirito would create his magnum opus, El Chavo del Ocho, still as a part of his other program. In 1972, El Chavo del Ocho aired for the first time, still as part of Bolaño's show, now called just Chespirito. The first draft of El Chavo would tell the story of a poor 8-year-old boy and a balloon seller at a park. After a few adjustments and addition of more characters, El Chavo premiered. Initially, Bolaños didn't have such high expectations for El Chavo, but both El Chavo and Chapulín were a huge success. The executives then asked for Bolaños to turn both Chapulín and El Chavo into two half-hour-long programs. El Chapulín Colorado was the first Mexican television program to be sold to other countries, opening the doors of Mexican television to the world. But the real success came with El Chavo. The program aired in 19 countries of Latin America, which is pretty much all of them, except for Cuba. I'm not really sure why. 
I mean, they have friends in Cuba, but for some reason they never heard El Chavo. Anyways, Guatemala was the first country outside of Mexico to wear El Chavo del Ocho in 1972. After that, the show slowly grew all across Latin America and other parts of the world as well. El Chavo aired in China, India, Italy, Russia, Morocco and of course in the US. The show was huge, just to give an example, the most watched television broadcast in the United States is the Super Bowl 49 with 114 million viewers. And bear in mind that the Super Bowl only happens once a year. There were times where El Chavo would reach 91 million viewers across the world, every single day. But why was the show so famous? El Chavo shows the day-to-day -day life in a neighborhood, or vecindad in Spanish, and the interactions between kids and adults. But not only just that, El Chavo portrayed the Latin American poverty. El Chavo was an orphan who barely had what to eat. La Chilindrina was the daughter of Don Ramon, an unemployed man with over 14 months behind on rent. He's constantly running away from Señor Barriga, his landlord. Kiko is the rich kid, quote unquote. He's the son of Doña Florinda, a prideful woman who receives a pension fund for her dead husband, who was a naval officer. El Chavo was a portrait of the Latin America in the 70s and 80s. Not only that, but El Chavo had a light-hearted humor, with simple jokes and themes. The show appealed to great audiences, for kids to adults, and still is a safe place where every Latino can visit and feel welcomed. Chespirito was, and still is, loved all throughout Latin America. Just look at footages from his funeral. This is not a soccer game. That's the Latin people saying goodbye to the person that brought them joy daily for years. Unfortunately, Televisa and Chespirito's families are currently fighting over the ownership of the characters and scripts, and since August 2020, El Chavo and other shows by Chespirito cannot be broadcast anywhere. Legally, there's no way to watch El Chavo today. All we can do is hope that Televisa and Chespirito's family settle an agreement soon. But now I want to know about you. Have you ever watched El Chavo or Chapulín Colorado? Leave your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like down below and share this video with your friends. That helps me a lot. In the description you'll find the links to my social networks, including my TikTok, where I'm creating original content talking about cinema. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Letterboxd as well. Thank you and I'll see you guys next week.